This is Twit. The open web is changing. In large part, the web has uh, been more or less accessible in its entirety to, well, anyone with an internet connection with some caveats. There are, of course, outliers like countries that limit citizens uh, to filtered content. Think North Korea is one example. Well, the EU's copyright directive has now been signed off on, and though it's a law for Europe, its ripple effects are trickling down to all of us. Joining us to talk about the ideas that make up the directive and what's going on there, how it's changing the potentially the freedom of information that we're so accustomed to online, is Corin McSherry, who is the legal director at the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Thank you for taking time to join us. So uh, why don't we begin by talking uh, about the directive, more specifically the ways in which articles 11 and 13 seem to have gone sideways. Right. So the the this is there's been a copyright reform in the works for many many years now, and most of the directive is fine. Most of the directive is fine, reflects reasonable changes. But at the last minute, about a year ago, they slipped in articles 11 and 13, and that changed everything. Article 11 is referred to as the link tax, and it basically requires folks to get a license if they want to share a link to a news article, which Who's going to do that, right? Most of us don't do that. It's not how it works. Um, and then even worse was Article 13. And Article 13 is basically a filtering directive. And it requires any platforms above a certain size and above a certain age, so if they've been around for three years or more, and you get a certain number of visitors, you have to take responsibility for making sure that no copyrighted content is ever uploaded on any of your platforms without permission that's going to require massive filtering. There's no other way to do it. Yeah, and huge, huge changes to the way that these major companies are working. They've operated so differently. How, uh, I mean, how wide is this net potentially? And, and when are we going to see this uh, in effect? Like when, when does this kind of go into place? Well, so there's one more technical hurdle that has to that that they has to pass. It has to go through the European Council. But normally, once you get to the European Council, everyone just agrees. But nonetheless, a couple countries could decide to to change their minds, which would be great. Um, and given that there's hundreds of thousands of people taken to the streets in Germany, you know, we may see at least Germany change its mind. Um, but if it gets to the European Council, then we move to the implementation stage. And what that basically means is all of the different countries have to figure out how they're going to implement this thing. And so that's where the battle is going to turn, where a lot of folks who are very concerned about this are going to have to go country by country and try to make sure that the implementation is as least damaging as possible. So will it be different per country? Like can Germany um, have a different, to implement it differently than say France will? Yes, uh, but the problem is for a company, if you operate all over Europe, if a given country has passes particularly strict mechanisms, you're gonna probably wanna just comply with that across the board as opposed to uh, complying with the lowest, the, the, the simplest and um, the least rigorous mechanism. So that's going to mean you're basically you're going to lean towards maximum filtering if that's what it, uh, what a country like France most likely requires because it's too hard to um, make sure that you implement you know different approaches across all of the different countries. It's pretty challenging to do that. And remember, if you don't do it right, you're facing a world of legal hurt. And then uh, for users, let's say users in the U.S., obviously this, the show that we do here is based in the U.S., um, is anyone here running the risk of, of seeing or noticing any changes to the content that they're used to seeing because of these changes uh, in the EU? Like, it, you know, I mean, obviously these companies are going to have to make decisions around that. Like, do we just, you know, uh, conform everything to the same standard or do we share differently? But like you're saying, that's a, that's a huge technology hurdle for them to tackle. Right. Right. And we're for sure going to see a lot of pressure to just have one big set of filters to rule them all. Um, and that's going to affect us in the United States as well, because it's technically can be very challenging and expensive for a company to, um, adopt different mechanisms for different countries. Now, co companies can do that, but it gets expensive. But the other thing that we fear is going to happen is that, which has happened before, is that certain uh, groups are going to come to the United States and say, okay, well, Europe passed this law. Mm. 
Why mm-hmm. don't we do the same thing here in the United States? And then we can harmonize around the world legally as well as practically. Um, so that's something that we would really not like to see. <laughs> we think it's bad enough in Europe. We certainly don't want to import this bad idea to the United States as well. So we don't want to like chicken little, the sky is falling this, but want to take it as seriously as we need to. And I think the EFF does a really good job of that. Uh, the Verge compared this to uh, when the when we required passports, when Europe started requiring passports to travel between countries or when everyone started requiring that. It d- didn't happen until after World War I. Um, before that, we could just travel. Would you, but would you say that that's an accurate me- uh, metaphor for what's going on here? Well, I mean, I think we're looking at potentially a pretty fundamental change. What, you know, YouTube, for example, has had a, what it calls a content ID filtering mechanism in place for about a decade now. And the sky hasn't fallen. But what has happened is we have 10 years of lots and lots of lawful content being taken down and, and identified as infringing when it wasn't. So based on that, what we know is that's what's going to continue to happen and just going to happen on a broader scale as more and more companies feel like they have to implement the same kinds of systems. And which is why a lot of people raised this question and protested against Article 13 in particular in Europe because they knew that this was going to have a profound impact on online speech. The thing that happens, unfortunately, way too often is in the name of stopping copyright infringement, we take down all kinds of non-infringing activity as well. And it's interesting to me because one of the things that happened, um, the problem is they pushed it through so quickly, but a number of creators realized the potential problems of this for them, for small creators getting their content up. And they realized this wasn't gonna be good for them either. And so they came out against it, but it was too late. I mean, we're seeing that here at our network. I mean, we've been covering Apple since 20, uh, for 14 years um, and covering it with video for almost as long. And just recently, our content has been taken down because we've shown, you know, a one or two minute clip of an Apple event while we're talking about it. And it's been taken down and that hasn't happened. Do you think that that they're uh, enforcing these content ID? Um, I mean, they're just algorithms. I'm sure it's not a person sitting there like deciding to take it down, but do you think they're using them more strongly? Yeah, I mean, that's precisely the point. It's, um, they have to rely on automated filters. It's the only way to do it cost efficiently, right? If you really go, if, especially if you're under pressure for with the threat of a copyright infringement lawsuit, if, you, if you're not perfect and you're taking everything down. So you try to set up filters and filters aren't very good at figuring out things like fair use, like when you're including a clip uh, and commenting on it. That's a fair use. It's legal under US law, but it's really hard for the robots to figure out that that's actually what's happening as opposed to something that's in 